What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Rowdy Rick Show. On today's episode, we're focusing in on the Gen Z and why I think it's a good idea for them to become mechanics in this day and age. Let's get this started. So first off, I just want to start this off by saying that I know Gen Z gets a bad rep. They get a lot of hate and a lot of people always clowning on them or talking bad about them, saying that they don't want to work, that they're lazy, that all of them want to become, uh, uh, what's it called, influencers or do something that has to do with social media, blah, 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 la, 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 whatever. Um, it might be true. It might not be true. I don't really care because I like to judge people on an individual basis. And for the most part, some of the Gen Z people that I've met, they're pretty, pretty cool. Like, I'm not even going to lie. They're pretty cool, pretty chill. You know, I'm kind of old. I'm like 32. I'm a millennial, you know. But luckily, I was growing up in the time when cell phones were coming out. So I remember in, what was it, middle school? Going into high school, we were getting cell phones, and I remember having a new different cell phone every other every other two months or something like that, you know. But I was working at that time. I've been working since I was 13, so I was able to buy my own stuff. My parents didn't buy it for me. But you know what my parents did do? They did give me a job because my parents had businesses. So they would hire us for their businesses, and we do work for them, and that's how I got money. That's how I earned money so that I could buy stuff like cell phones and PlayStations and stuff like that when I was young. But I digress. This is about Gen Z's, not me. I'm sorry. I've been noticing a trend these last couple of weeks, I guess, more now than ever. Actually, I've been focusing more on why is it so hard for uh, these younger generations to get, get a job. And at first I thought it's like, well, you know, they're probably not really like applying themselves or not really trying to get a job. But... I think it's just that they're looking in the wrong places, man. And I don't think it's your fault. You know, maybe mechanics and working on cars is not your first interest. But I think that a lot of us or a lot of them, it has to also do with uh, their parents. And not in a bad way because I know your parents always want best for you. Um, But for the most part, I think... Your parents were always trying to just push you to like, hey, we need you to become a doctor, a lawyer, or a policeman, or fireman, la, la, la. You know, something something up there. And a lot of parents ain't really like passing down their interests like automobiles or uh, trade jobs as in like construction or plumbing. And so this video is dedicated to you guys and just to try to uh, persuade you or... May, make, maybe make you just a little bit more interested in some type of blue collar type job or a trade trade type job. <clears throat> Let me give you five reasons why I believe Gen C should uh, become mechanics in the automotive industry or any industry in reality that involves mechanics. So reason number one, there is a, there is a, a national shortage on mechanics right now they need them everywhere every dealership is hiring a lot of mom and pop shops are hiring a lot of independent businesses are hiring for mechanics um and when i say like you know become a mechanic i'm not talking about you don't have to become a professional mechanic as in like oh you're replacing engines and transmissions or doing superchargers and performance jobs on cars like no there is a lot of entry positions right now available a lot you know like as in a lube tech changing people's oils rotating their tires easy stuff that you guys could get into and it pays pretty good i mean it's going to pay an entry position is probably going to pay as much as a job at a fast food restaurant or as a, like a barista or like as a uh, person working at one of those car washes, you know, something like that. It's going to probably pay around the same, like I'm going to say from $18 to $21 to $22 an hour entry position. And it's very easy to get to. You don't really need a whole lot, probably just like a good wrench set, you know, from like eight to like, I would get a good wrench set from like 
eight millimeters to up to 24 millimeters and a couple sockets a ratchet you know just very light tools i think with like 500 bucks you guys should be able to get in and get hired anywhere literally anywhere they're hiring everywhere and the best thing about it is you're not going to have to be dealing with customers like you would at a fast food restaurant because you're going to be inside the shop the service advisors are the ones that are dealing with the customers not you and there's always room for advancement depending on how good you start getting how fast you learn how much you apply yourself you guys will be advancing within a year to two years and maybe start move up into like some front suspension or doing people's brakes and stuff like that trust me it's easy for anybody to get in right now in the automotive industry if you guys ain't having no luck getting hired at a restaurant or bars or wherever you guys are really trying to work at trust me you guys can get a job in the automotive industry for reals and i'm gonna give you a, i'm gonna give you one good tip one good tip and this applies to all areas whether wherever you want to go apply first apply online submit your application fill it out completely apply online right after you're done applying let's say you applied to five places that day right after you're done applying for those five places online Go to each place that you apply and present yourself in person and ask for the manager or the service manager. Can I speak to the service manager or the manager? He's going to come on and tell you, hey, how you doing, man? I'm the service manager. How can I help you? Just, I just came here to introduce myself. My name is so-and-so, and, -so, and um, I filled out an application online today for your, for uh, to work here. And I just want to introduce myself and uh, see... Uh, see how the shop looks and see if uh um if you guys have anybody in mind right now or you know just be yourself just be yourself just go introduce yourself and look at the manager get a feel for him see if you even see if see if you even like it at the shop you go to because sometimes some of these shops are grimy so you'll go in there and you'll be like oh hell no i ain't trying to work here fuck that or sometimes you'll go in there and the manager's a fucking dick or and you're like, oh hell no, I ain't working for this fool. You know what I mean? Like some of these some of these places are grimy, so I just be aware of, uh, be aware of that, you know. I when when I first started, my first job at a shop, um, I didn't even have any tools. I had no tools. I went to a shop, the guy said, I have another another uh, toolbox right there. You could work out of that toolbox. It has all the tools you need. And my first, my first mechanic job, I came from working at a warehouse, making like $16 an hour, taking home like $500 a week, right? And me just transitioning over into doing mechanics, my first job was paying me $800 a week without me even having tools. That's like $300 extra dollars like that, just switching over careers from warehouse to uh, mechanics. No overtime, nothing like that. Just pure eight hundred bucks, and it was cash too. He hired me, and decided to pay me cash. He wasn't even writing me a check, so that was cool for a little bit. But then, you know, after a while, I'm like, hey, I need to start reporting taxes, and you know, whatever. So I ended up moving to another spot. But that's reason number one. You can literally get a job anywhere right now as a mechanic, as a lube tech. As a as a tire person, just fucking swapping out tires like, hey, this guy came in with the flat. I need you to put a new tire. Literally, man, get a job anywhere. Trust me. Trust me when I say you can get a job anywhere right now. If you can't get a job anywhere right now, if you're having a hard time getting a job, if you've been unemployed for five, six months, go into the automotive industry and you'll have a job within a month or so, you know, depending how good you are at interviews, depending how good. You could carry yourself, or and depending how good you are talking to people, you know, you could get a job within a month or two. Like me, if if I was to quit my job today, I guarantee you, I could get a job tomorrow or the next day. You know, I could literally get, I could literally run through all these shops right here. I live in Moreno Valley. I could literally run through all these shops in Moreno Valley within a year if I really wanted to, but I don't because. I'm actually trying to 
progress my career and I'm not willing to settle for any shop. You know what I mean? I'm also looking, just like the shops are looking for a good mechanic, I'm also looking for a good shop that's going to help me grow. So that's just me though. But for you guys who are just trying to look, just trying to get your foot in the door, easy. Mechanics all day. You guys will get a job. And another thing, don't just think about shops like car shops in general. Think about like the city, working for the city. They pay real good and they have good benefits. And they also need mechanics because you know the people who work for the city use the city cars. RTAs, the buses, who's going to fix the buses? Jobs all day right there for buses, for the city, um, for the trash company. Who fixes the trash company? You know what I mean? Who fixes all these Amazon trucks? Who fixes the the fleet trucks or, or the, the big rigs that do cross country? There's jobs everywhere lined up. Everywhere. You guys want to make some money? I would go into big rigs. Those motherfuckers make a shitload of money. You could buy a house, support a whole family with the type of money they make. So that's just reason number one. Okay, so reason number two why Gen Z should become mechanics. Times are hard right now. And I understand, guys, like the pay that we're gaining for, for jobs at uh, fast food restaurants or, you know, coffee shops or being a barista or whatever, like pay is very low right now. If you're not an uh, influencer or working at a corporation like a high up CEO or a, a registered nurse or a doctor or a lawyer like that, times are hard right now for everybody. You know what I mean? And it. Let's say you have a car and your car breaks down and you work at this fast food joint over here that's paying you $16, $17 an hour and your car breaks down. (sighs) I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be very hard for you to get that car fixed. Very hard. Unless you know how to fix it yourself. You know what I mean? But let me give you an example. Just just the other day, um, this guy came in and he said, I need you guys to check my car out. I went underneath. I checked it out. He needed a new axle. He needed one axle. And he needs to do his uh, oil pan gasket, which is two very easy jobs. Two very easy jobs, right? They gave him the estimate. They wrote him up a quote, $1,200 for just to do that. And it probably take me like an hour and a half to do that. I could do it for him in like an hour and a half. You know, $1,200 is what they're charging them to do that, which is crazy. That's like, for some of you, for some for some people, that's two weeks worth of checks, which is crazy for something so simple, right? Another example is just uh, look at my videos for the 550i that I've been working on. On just parts alone, I spent like $3,000. Now imagine if I would have paid somebody to come and do all that work I did to it. If I paid somebody to do it, it would have been my bill would have came out to like six thousand bucks. It's crazy, man. So it's another reason why um, I think a lot of Gen C should become mechanics because if you become a mechanic, you could save yourself a lot of money, and you can make a lot of money off of people when you do uh, side works and stuff, and you wouldn't have to charge them ridiculous amounts of money like uh, some of these shops do you could charge them half the money and still make good money once you develop your skills you feel me that's reason number two and it's a good reason because everything's going up in prices and all the new cars are expensive people are keeping their old cars more as of now and uh, these old cars well old cars come with a lot of uh, maintenance that has been overlooked and hasn't been done and it all catches up and it all hits at one point and you're going to have to fix all of that. And you could either fix it yourself or you could pay somebody to fix it. You feel me? So that's just reason number two. Reason number three why Gen Z's should also become mechanics. This is another reason. It's a pretty simple reason. Um, as of now, you guys really don't need any schooling or any like a trade school or a uh, Anything special to become an entry-level mechanic. You know, of course, once you become a mechanic, um, I, I, I urge you to, uh, 
either study on your own. There's a lot of ways you can study. You know, you could buy the AC books yourself and just read through them and study and take the test. There's a lot of courses online. There's a lot of information on YouTube. But for entry level, you don't need nothing special. You could literally, you just literally need like $500 worth of tool to get in. But like I said, once you're in, if you want to keep advancing this career, because you do shoot up fast. If you really, if you really want, if you really like what you're doing and, and you enjoy this career path and, and you're serious about it and you're passionate about it, you can start off entry level and you'll shoot up fast. I'm telling you, you shoot up fast. It happened to me. I shot up fast. I'm at a point right now where I'm almost, I'm almost capped out as in capped out. I'm capping myself out because I'm almost capped out as an employee because I can only go so far without without all my certifications. You you understand? Like I'm not capped out as in other places. Like if I go into big rigs or or uh, some of these construction um, excavators and stuff like that, being a mechanic for those, they make great money too. But as a mechanic with no certifications, I'm almost tapped out. You know, so I'm studying and trying to learn as much as I can as I go. So see what's the next step. But you will shoot up fast. Trust me on that, guys. You will shoot up fast if you apply yourself. And uh, it's pretty, re- pretty, pretty easy reason, pretty uh, self-explanatory why this is reason number three. Because nowadays they, a lot of these places want you to fucking have a bachelor's and five years of experience to get in, and you're gonna be starting at the same wage as a mechanic, most likely. You know what I mean? Experience beats all. So that's just reason number three. Reason number four why Gen C should become mechanic. Purpose. Sometimes it's hard to uh, know what our purpose is out here, especially when we're working jobs that are kind of mundane and not really, you know, doing anything crazy. Like I remember when I used to work at the warehouse, it was kind of pointless to me. Sometimes I'd be like, damn, this is pointless. What am I even doing? Like, this is not doing anything for me. But uh, being a mechanic, it has its purpose, you know. Sometimes you're able to help out people who really need your help, who really don't have money, and they need their car because they need to go to work to support the family. And sometimes you can help them out, you know. It gives you a good sense of purpose. Especially if you're working like in areas where it's like, uh, you know, you are you become a mechanic for the military. Like, your purpose is to make sure that the soldiers are out here driving safe, you know. And even as a normal mechanic, when you do somebody's brakes, you, you, you make sure that they're out there driving safe, you know. And if a car comes in and you check the car, you're underneath the car and you're looking at everything, you have a, a purpose there too. You're making sure that... Let me find, let me, let me uh, make sure that this car is good to go for this customer and make sure there's nothing dangerous that I could see right off the bat that's going to put this person's life in danger. You know, like a bad ball joint or bad wheel hub or, or something like that. I've seen some crazy stuff, you know, and A, like, I go tell the customer, I bring them out, look, this is very unsafe. You're like riding on luck right now. Do you want us to fix this? Like, we'll, we'll try our best to give you a good price and everything, but this has to be fixed, you know, and um, stuff like that. It gives you a sense of purpose. I I know it gives me a sense of purpose. Like, I, I would help my parents out. Like, hey, mom, let me fix your car. You know, like, if I ever drive in their car, if I ever drive their car and I feel some weird stuff or their brakes are weird or some loose steering, hey, mom, let me check out your car. I want to make sure you're safe. It really does give, it, it gives a good sense of purpose. This job does, you know, it gives a good sense of purpose. I'm not going to lie and say that every day is like that. No, some days it's just, some days it's trash. Some days you're just tired. Sometimes, you, some days you're, you're exhausted and frustrated. But for the most part, we all have a good sense of purpose when we're doing this job. I mean, that's why we got in it to begin with, right? We wanted to get in because we wanted to learn because we want to do something with that knowledge that we get from knowing how to work on cars, whether it's building your own car 
or building your own brand or, or uh, having project builds or, or doing crazy stuff that no one's done before on cars. You understand? Like all that. It's crazy. Also, imagine having your girlfriend break down and you not having enough money to pay to fix it or she not having enough money to pay to fix it and you not even having the skill to fix it. Like, imagine how you're going to feel. You're going to feel bad, man. That's why it's important. That's why it's important to know this stuff. This It's not just a job. It's knowledge for your lifetime. You're going to have a skill that no one can take away for you, from you for the rest of your life. That's purpose, you know? And these skills transfer over to anything. You know, if you take out an engine out of a car and you put it back in and it's running and everything, that's going to give you confidence in saying, like, oh, fuck it. I could do the plumbing in my own house. You know, I could, I'll figure it out. If I could figure that out, I could definitely figure out how to fix the plumbing in my house. Or I could definitely figure out how to dry patch this wall. Or I could definitely figure out how to fix my, my uh, garage door that just broke, which is dangerous. I'm going to let you guys know that right now. Uh, garage doors are dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. You could you could kill yourself. So probably not a good example if you don't know what you're doing. But being a mechanic has a lot of purpose to it. It has a lot of advantages also. And the skills you get from it, you take them everywhere in your life. Cuz we don't we don't just put bolts back together. You know what I mean? We have to learn electrical. Which then once you know how basic electrical stuff stuff and if you don't like mechanics you could transfer over to being an electrician or learning how to do other electrical shit you also have to learn hvac because you got to fix the acs in these cars you know and if you don't like the mechanics you could transfer over to hvac as another trait do acs on apartments and houses and stuff like that you know what i mean like the skills you get as a mechanic are are they're transferable to other jobs if ever you need to do that. You know what I mean? You become a mechanic and you keep going to school and you keep learning. You could become a mechanical engineer, you know, which would be crazy. Those are just a couple examples, man. Like why I think Gen C's would make good uh, mechanics because you guys are pretty much at, at your guys at the end of the rope. As in jobs, as in pay, as in everything, you know, and there's this field right now that just has a national shortage, and right now is the perfect time to take advantage of that. It's the perfect time, you know. All the old timers are dying out, or they're leaving, or they're just leaving the space open for you guys to come and take, you know what I mean? I mean, of course, our, us millennials are still here, but, you know we're in here it's just a couple of us too because our parents told us the same thing become lawyers become doctors and stuff and a lot of us weren't interested in becoming a mechanic and 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 at that time when i was growing up we believed that you needed to go to school to become a mechanic at least i believed that i i don't know about other people but at least i thought that you know and if i thought it then must a lot of people must have thought it as well so you know, I wish somebody would have told me, you could just get a job anywhere, man. Trust me. Do what I do and, and you'll get in. You know, and I would have been a mechanic a long time ago. I would definitely wouldn't have been working at a warehouse for as long as I did. So, that's reason number four. Okay, so, moving on. Reason number five, Gen C should become mechanics. You guys got nothing to lose and everything to gain from it that easy you guys really don't got nothing to lose you might lose a little bit of money like 500 bucks just to get your your startup tools but i wouldn't even consider that a loss because you'll keep that at home and and you'll still use it for years to come but for the most part you guys got nothing to lose it's so easy to get into the automotive industry right now into any mechanical industry right now that if you guys get in and you don't like it you guys could be working anywhere else within the next couple of weeks. You know what I mean? There's not a whole lot of time and energy 
or expenses you have to put in when you're first starting off. Scan your foot in the door, seeing if you like it, and going forward. Once you put a year, or two years, or three years in, then yeah, you might have a little bit more to lose because you invested in some better tools. You invested in more tools and and maybe some some uh, courses or or got your AAC certificates and stuff like that. But even then, you're not really losing because you obtain some skills that you're going to use for the rest of your life. You understand? And those skills go with you everywhere. You know, I've been thinking of moving to Texas, and I'm already, like, thinking, like, fuck it, I can move to Texas, and I'll get a job out there as a mechanic. I know for sure they're hiring. The other day, just the other day, I saw them hiring in Texas for, like, $75 an hour for a mechanic. Like, sign me up. But I got a couple stuff I got to settle out here first before I could do any of that. But I'm telling you guys, you know, you guys would like this job. It gives you purpose. It gives you a, it gives you confidence when you fix shit, hard shit. When you fix hard shit, you get that confidence. You believe you can do anything. It gives you a sense of purpose. You know, it's laborious, so you get tired. You're actually doing shit with your hands and your body. You put it in that work. You know what I mean? You're also thinking throughout the day, especially like when you're working on electrical shit and you're thinking like, this doesn't add up. This does this doesn't make sense. All that stuff, using your mind, your body. It's a great feeling. It's rewarding. It's rewarding when you it's rewarding when you figure out the problem. And you're like, I got it. I know what's wrong with this. And you fix it, turn it on, bam, work. It's rewarding. You know? We need we need more uh, car guys in this industry. We need more of you guys, you know. It's it'd be good for it'd be good for everybody. It'd be good for you guys. It'd be good for the consumer. It'd be good for the car culture. You know? You guys would do better modifications on your car than just decals and fucking lips and whack ass spoilers, trust me. You guys would start focusing more on let me get some power out of my car, you know. Crazy stuff. You know, like it's a win win for everybody. You know, the the people who say bad stuff about Gen Z's and, and critique you guys and everything and are kinda hard on you or whatever, like don't listen to that, man. I know we're just going we're just you guys are just dealing with what you're dealing with because of what's been handed to you. You know, and I'm here to tell you guys that uh I welcome you into the the car community or the automotive industry as a mechanic and everything i i welcome all of you guys you know as long as you guys are really interested in working on cars and actually uh being uh motivated or not motivated but actually applying yourself to learn and to fix these cars and and become better you guys are more than welcome. And I know a lot of mechanics will probably feel the same way about that. You know, we all like the new guy at the shop, especially if he's young, because, you know, we could all have a good time and mess around and teach you. You know, one thing as a mechanic, I'm not going to lie, we I like teaching people some of my tricks. I like doing that. And I know other mechanics do too. I know some of them don't, but there's always going to be room for you guys here. Just know that. There's room for you guys here. Take advantage right now that the industry has such a shortage. Take advantage of it. Because everything's going to change, guys. Everything's changing. Everything is changing. Take advantage of it right now. But that's my top five reasons why I think Gen Z should become mechanics. If no one has told you, at least you heard it from me. You guys are welcome into the industry and there's a lot of room for you guys here. And it's easy for you guys to get in right now, more than ever. There's going to be a lot of people saying why you shouldn't become a mechanic. And there's going to be a lot of people saying that you shouldn't do it if you ain't got schooling. And to that, I say, take it with a grain of salt. Because maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. Nobody fucking knows unless you try. And once you try and you see for yourself, then you make up your own decision. You don't got to listen to everybody. Don't even listen to me. Do whatever the fuck you want to do.